trusted the Senate to rise above short-term passions. At the last moment, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell altered his proposed rules for the impeachment trial. Gone was the possibility that the evidence collected during the various House inquiries might not be entered into evidence in the Senate trial. And the Democratic Party House managers and White House lawyers would now have three days and not two to make their opening statements. That left the issue of witnesses and documents. House Democrats argued that they were withheld in the course of their inquiries into whether Donald Trump was withholding congressionally mandated military aid for Ukraine in return for an investigation into former Vice President Joe Biden, and that these must be produced in the Senate trial. So Leader McConnell wants a trial with no existing evidence and no new evidence. A trial without evidence is not a trial. It's a cover-up. The White House argues that the request for more evidence proves the Democrats don't have a strong case against the president. They said in their brief, we have overwhelming evidence and they're afraid to make their case. Think about it. Think about it. It's common sense. Overwhelming evidence to impeach the president of the United States. And then they come here on the first day and they say, you know what, we need some more evidence. The White House also argues that the documents and witnesses are privileged. In order to shape foreign policy, the president must be able to have private deliberations with advisors. And that's an argument rejected by the Democrats. Make the argument that the president's conduct here was, was, uh, was conduct that every president uh, should be allowed to engage in. And... Uh, I think that most Americans don't believe that. For that, Mr. Chief Justice, I yield back. The Democrats failed to pass their amendments. Under McConnell's rules, though, there will be another chance to debate the need for more witnesses and documents, but only after opening arguments and the cross-examination of the House managers and White House lawyers. You just watch. Donald Trump was reported to be monitoring proceedings while attending the World Economic Forum in Switzerland. His position remains unchanged. Uh, that whole thing is a hoax. Well, let's cross over to Shia Britanzi, who's following events for us from Capitol Hill. So where are we right now in terms of that Senate process, Shia? The amendments keep coming. We're now on the fifth amendment that's been proposed by the Democrats, this time to subpoena documents from the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, relating to that Ukrainian military aid that the Democrats allege was held up as part of a quid pro quo in order to get an investigation into, into Joe Biden. Senators are definitely getting, getting restless, we understand. Mitch McConnell seems to be, in what I suppose passes as high drama in the current, in the current session. And McConnell got up and said, look, after the last, well, after the last amendment failed, um, can we just stack all these amendments together because they're all so similar? And Chuck Schumer got up and said no. And, and, and he pointed out that he had a good many, in his words, amendments still to go. But he said no, because he feels that each one individually is very important to get on the record. What the Democrats say is, look, we will have a vote eventually under Mitch McConnell's rules, which will be passed eventually at some point in the, in the coming hours, as to how the trial will progress. But that might just be a blanket vote on whether to admit more documents and witnesses. If it doesn't pass, then no one will ever know what the documents and witnesses were that weren't admitted. So what the Democrats are trying to do to get on the record and to try and get into the ether of American public opinion and say, these are all the things we have to have to have a fair trial in, in the Senate. But the, as, as we heard, the Republicans say, look, we will have a vote on documents and witnesses at a later stage. And anyway, why do you need more evidence when you said you, you had the evidence already to impeach the president? Well, she'll leave it there and uh, follow events uh, through the night. Thanks, uh, Shihab. Well, Michael Isikoff is chief investigative correspondent for Yahoo News. He says while the Democrats have been unable to get any major amendments across the line, the first day of the trial hasn't been a total failure for them. Well, certainly the votes, the voting has been pretty much as, well, has been exactly as expected. Uh, Mitch McConnell had the votes and he's prevailed on all these amendments. But I got to say, I think uh, today was also a good day for the House Democrats. I thought um, Adam Schiff did a uh, pretty bang up job just laying out the House case uh, in a very effective way uh, and uh, emphasizing the uh, stonewalling, as it were, that the White House uh, has been engaged in in for refusing to turn over documents and allow witnesses to testify. Uh, the question, there are two audiences. Uh, there are the, there's the Senate audience, and we just don't know 
uh, how whether he's getting any traction with Senate Republicans to get those votes he needs, those four votes that he needs. It, I thought it was uh, noteworthy that Susan Collins did put out a statement after Schiff's opening presentation saying she was likely to vote for witnesses. That, I think, uh, although she used the word likely, pretty much locks her in. So that's one solid vote there uh, for opening this up to witnesses. Uh, they need three more. Lisa Murkowski and Romney are assumed to be in that camp as well. So it's like one more will they get. But I was saying Schiff had two audiences. The broader audience was the American public.